Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of my Fly Fishing for Beginners series on Bob's Bits. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the reel, the fly fishing reel. Um, there are a number of different types as you can see here. Um, and What I'm going to do today is go through um, the different types um, and how to set a reel up from scratch really. You get your new reel, um, what to do next, what you'll need, things like that. So at the end of the video I've got an update for the channel. Um, we've had some good news from the Angling Trust, so stick around to the end um, and I'll give you um, what that means for us as anglers um, and what that means for me um, following my previous video that I posted. So things have changed quite a lot. Um, so we'll jump straight into looking at the reels now uh, and we'll start to talk you through them. Right then, first type of reel. We're going to go for the good old traditional one. I'll pick this one up because it's the biggest. Um, but yeah, this is your traditional spool type fishing reel, fly reel as such. Um, there's usually two halves to the reel. The first half is what they call the spool, and this is the bit that holds the line. Um, so you can see in the centre there's a different coloured line, and that's called backing. If you're fishing at range, the reason we have backing is that if you get a run, and it's a very long run, you'll run out of fly line and spool out very quickly. So the backing's there just as that insurance measure. Um, you don't cast with it, it's not used for casting purposes whatsoever. Um, it's just there in case the fish does a really long run and stops you spooling out. Um, the frame is the second part of the reel and this is the bit that attaches to the rod um, and manages the drag system. Um, so this is what we, this particular reel has what's called a disc drag system which is managed by this little screw. Some have a dial on the back or a little gauge that you can flick um, but this one's got a little screw on there. So yeah, that's the first type of reel, the traditional um, fly fishing reel. Got another one here, exactly the same, apart from we've got a spare spool for this one as well. So you have a different spare spools for different weight lines really. So this one's got a floating and it's got an intermediate on this spool. But yeah, much the same way, you've got your frame and you've got your spool um, and the drag system inside. Um, and then they just clip together like that. So that's the traditional reel. Um, second type that I'm going to cover with you um, is the cassette type reel. Um, now these were, were invented sort of in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and, and basically what it enables you to do is to have basically the frame and the spool in the same way as you had before. But you have a cassette um, that fits on top of the spool section. So these cassettes are there so that you can do a quick change of lines really easy. I've got three here for this particular reel. Um, floating line, on the, there's the light coloured one, um, the intermediate line and then the, the sinker on the bottom on the black one there. So yeah, it's dead easy to change. I mean, as I say, I had the floating line on for a start. Literally, all you do is line up your spool um, to how you need it, which is like this. Just clip it up click the two sections of the reel back together and you can hear that's that's all engaged properly so that's those um, got another one here this is probably my favorite reel of them all um, so yeah this is another cassette type one um, and I've got umpteen of these spools with various different lines on a different weights it's the first first type of reel I use this this one um, and it's been in heavy use since um, so finally this is a really quite an old reel, probably mid 70s. Um, it doesn't even have a removable spool. Um, you can see in the centre, we've just got this little screw there. That's this sort of captive screw that's there. Um, there's, there's no real drag system on this one, really. It's just there to hold the line. So fundamentals for reels. It doesn't matter how much you spend on a reel when you first start in fly fishing. Um, You've seen in the magazines and on, on the internet lots of pictures of these lovely CNC machined aluminium reels. You can even get Chinese copies of them that aren't very expensive. You can get one of those if you want. The only limitation with those is they tend to be this type and getting spools for the cheap Chinese ones can be a little bit difficult. Um, so yeah, my recommendation would be to go for, for a cassette type reel. Um, probably get one of these second hand. They last forever, they're absolutely bomb proof. It's a leader LC reel, they're doing them in three different sizes, a 60, 80 and 100. 
um, and they're great little reels and you can quite commonly pick them up on eBay for about 40, 50 pounds with two or three spools with them as well, which is ideal when you're first starting out. They're very lightweight, they provide a good balance to your rod, they're not going to hinder your casting whatsoever, they're just really good little reels, um, perfect for just shoving in your bag. Right, so we're going to take you through the process now of how to load a reel with uh, line and backing. So you're going to need a few things to be able to do this. Um, the first is a roll of backing. Uh, this is just cheap and cheerful, £20 braided backing stuff, um, picking up for a couple of quid really. As I say, you're not really going to use this an awful lot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's literally just to, to be there as an insurance policy and back the line out so you've got a bit of extra um, sort of padding for your, for your line there to take it out to where it needs to be on the spool. First thing I'm going to do is strip this old um, line off this, this spool. This is an old line um, that was on one of the spools that came with this reel when I got it. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a nonsense line really so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I've got my new line here. This is a four-way intermediate that I'm going to use to, to try and catch coarse fish on. Um, so yeah, I need to get this old one off. I'm going to strip the old backing off as well because who knows how old that is. Um, it might be rotten for all we know. So best thing to do is to get rid. So I'm going to stop the video now and join up with you in a few minutes when I've got the line off this spool. Right, so you can see there's our spool with no line on it. So I'm going to do this with the spool on just to make it clearer for you guys. Um, right, for this particular reel, this is going to be tricky for us to do with the spool off the frame um, because we've got these two line guards here that get in the way. Um, so we're going to have to do this arbor knot with the spool in place. So first of all, reassemble our reel. Nice reassuring click. Confirm that, yeah, that's our left hand retrieve. So what we want to do is feed the line onto the spool the same way that we're going to retrieve. So we start from the bottom and go through this line guard at the back, round the top of the, sp uh, the spool, and then underneath this line guard here. Now we're on to the actual arbor knot, if you like. So we've got our tag end and our standing line there. So what we're going to do is go underneath and then we form a loop in our tag end and then form an overhand knot under there, like so. So that gives us our, what they call the arbor knot. Um, to stop it slipping too far, we also put a little overhand knot in the end of the tag and the two knots will pull against each other once we start to tighten this down. So that's in place now, so that's our knot. So all we do, give this a little bit of tension just so that our tag end doesn't pull through. Uh, pull both ends together and then pull it down. So let's pull now and you'll see this tag end get shorter and shorter until eventually our tags work together. I'll just tighten this up a little bit. So we have to work this really tight till the uh, till the knot is seated against the spindle at the centre of the spool. And then as you'll see as I start to retrieve it will tighten up. So I'll just pull that off so that we can trim off that tab end. The world's bluntest pair of scissors. There we go. Just make sure everything's bedded down nice and tight. And then all that remains is to fill the spool. So keep a little bit of tension and start to work it forward. I tend to turn the reels upside down when I'm loading them. Just makes it that little bit easier just to see what's going on. So yeah, eventually you'll get a bed of line in there. And my objective, if I set the scissors here, is to fill this till it's just about appearing in this centre ring. And at that point, we'll attach the line to the backing. Right, now we're done with the, the backing. So we're going to put the reel to one side and start to prepare our line. So you'll see here, this is our line as it comes straight out of the packet. 
we have to take these little sections of ribbon off. So I'll get rid of those. And then you'll notice one of these tag ends has got a, a label on it. Now this says on the label, attach this end to back in. Um, if you don't do that, you'll end up with a world of problems when you try and cast the line. Because um, the, the weight forward section will be at the back. Um, and you'll be trying to throw a level line, basically. Um, so we're going to attach this, this free end here with the label on it to our back end with a special knot called an Albright knot. Um, and that is really, really strong, and it's, it's a great way to, to attach the back into the line. Right, so we're at the point where we're actually going to attach our fly line to the back end. So we form a loop. We take the end of our braided line, our back end. So I've made took a, a fair section off here, as you can see. Go through, start to work back towards our fingers, warm. two, three, four, five, I'm going to do five here, and then we come back a bit to Three, four, five. Come back down the same way you went in, like that, and then we start to pull everything tight. You can see that's made a nice little noose knot, just moisten everything, and pull everything tight with both ends. Make sure everything's really, really bedded down. And if you're really concerned, you can even use a little bit of super glue on there just to stop everything from slipping. But that's not going anywhere. You shouldn't get any breakages with that. So you just need to clip off both tag ends. Just make double certain that that's not going anywhere. That's really tight. And then trim this end as well. There we go. That's our line attached to the back him. So you can see, you can pull as hard as you like, that's not coming off. And then it's just a simple case of adding some tension in and then starting to load your reel. Right, now we've got our line loading onto the reel. What we need to do is, is find a way of attaching a leader to the end of this line here. So there are two options for that. Just pull a bit more line off. The first is to do something called a nail knot, which would attach the line directly to this um, piece of fly line here. So a piece of mono would come off the end of there and be joined directly to this line. And the problem with that is as your leader wears out, and you want to replace it, you end up cutting a section off and eventually you end up shorter and shorter and shorter until you end up with this fly line being unusable. Um, so there's a, a better option for that. Some of the more modern lines have these built in as part of the manufacturing process and they have a welded loop like that on the end. So you would just do your leader loop to loop to that. Um, now for these more budget lines that I'm using today or older lines or ones that you've used a nail knot on previously, you use some of these. This is a, what they call a braided loop. Um, you can see it's made out of braid and it's woven back onto itself to form the loop. And this little red um, piece of plastic tube there is there just specifically to seat down onto the, to this piece of fly line here. Um, they come in packets of three or four. These ones I got from John Norris, um, the mini loops. Um, but any of them, you can get them all over the place. Any good fly shop should carry them. Um, so what we're going to do is show you how to attach one of these to the end of the line. So you'll see here we've got the loop there, the braided loop there. 
and we need to open up this gap so if you're careful you can thread he says you can start it up like this look so you can start to thread this braided loop sometimes you'll need to do do this and pinch it and then grab the line and then smooth it down to work it up depends on how thick your fly line is but what I would do is it's starting to just grab now up so we'll do this get it as far up into the loop as possible and then what I like to do is just take a dab of super glue um, before I slide this down so then all we would do you don't need this this plastic sleeve will go down and stay there and, and trap the loop onto the end of the line but just to make absolutely 100% certain tiny little dab of super glue on there and then what we'll do is tease this plastic sleeve down. You can see it's starting to get tighter already. I'll start to pull that from behind and get it down over the, the fly line. Smooth it down more. Over where we put our super glue. Here we go. Just a little bit at that end as well, just to completely seal everything up and then just tidy it round you can trim this off if you want what I'm going to do is just ease it onto the line with what super glue that remains and roll it round look trying not to get it stuck to my fingers and then we just leave that to dry Give it a good few minutes before you reel it up because the last thing you want to do is reel it up and get it attached to your nice spooled line that you've just attached to your reel. So that's it. That's our, our fully loaded reel from start to finish. All ready to go for you. All you need to do is attach your leader, as I say, with a loop-to-loop -loop connection onto that end, fly on the other, and you're fishing. Well, as promised at the start of the video, I wanted to give you an update in terms of what's happening with the channel. Um, well, we had some fantastic news the other day. Um, the Angling Trust have been really good at lobbying the government and they've actually managed to, to get a complete U-turn on the announcement that was made on the 5th, um, which basically means we're allowed to fish again. Woohoo! Um, yeah, we are allowed to fish. It's, we've got to be local, though, um, within five miles from home, which for me is perfect because I've got a river a mile that way. Um, so, yeah, it means I can get out fishing again. Now, I... Outside of being a member, I'm completely not affiliated with the Angling Trust in one way, shape or form. I don't hold any position with that. If there was a single reason why I would recommend that you join the Angling Trust, it's for the pure fact that they've lobbied for our sport um, and got this fantastic decision out of the government. So yeah, it means we're all able to go fishing again and for that I'm eternally grateful for it. Um, if you want to consider being a member, now is a fantastic time to do so. I joined last night um, and the reason I did so is because it's £29 a year um, and you either get a three-month magazine subscription with it as a free gift or, or a £29 tackle voucher, which, to be honest, it's a no-brainer. Just visit anglingtrust.net. I'll put the link in the description of the video just to, to help you get there. If they don't get members, then they don't exist, basically. So, yeah, if... Um, a resource as valuable as them um, that's actually helped us in such a tricky situation pay them back in spades join it's, it's virtually free if you think about the free gift that you get back uh, most of them would spend a load of money on bait or or um, angling equipment anyway at this time of year um, so help help the charity that's helped us so much so thanks for watching i hope you've found this little um, view into the world of fly fishing reels useful um, hopefully get you out on the bank as soon as you can um, you, sh you should have everything you need to, to tackle your lineup we talked about rods in the previous video um, and we'll be moving on to things like casting um, and building up leaders and, and stuff like that just to get you enough um, skills to get you out there and catching fish so if you like what you see and you want to see the rest of the series of videos develop 
Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, um, drop the video a like. More than happy to answer any comments anybody's got, just drop them underneath the video and I'll get back to you.